Hello everybody and welcome! Recently, I have been checking out these 24 hours in VR videos where people are challenging themselves to stay in virtual reality for 24 hours. And eventually, I got curious enough to try it out myself. So I started to ask myself, if I would try this, what on earth would I do for 24 hours long? Will I sleep? I decided to try it and I first tried to figure out what game I should pick for this challenge. I wanted to have the comfort of not having my VR controllers ending up without battery in the middle of the session. And I didn't want it to use a gamepad or my keyboard for 24 hours long. So I came up with Grand Theft Auto 5 with VR mods. This way I could still do a lot of things in virtual reality and use my VR controllers for things that need VR controllers like for example controlling weapons and my keyboard for when I don't really need the VR controllers like for example to control vehicles or to walk around. I had the cables to charge the VR controllers on my desk so I was able to charge the batteries when I didn't need them. I also had food and drinks on my desk because I wanted to stay in VR when I wanted to eat or drink something. Over the complete 24 hours, I took 3 very short moments to give food to my cat and as well so I could go to the toilet. Staying in virtual reality for a long time is a lot of fun, but unfortunately you cannot go to the toilet in virtual reality when you have to go. I had an alarm sound set to go off every hour so I could keep a track on the time. Usually I use the wireless adapter for my HTC Vive but this wasn't going to last for 24 hours long. You will notice the adapter attached on my Vive headset but it was not connected. I was using the cable connection for my Vive but decided to leave the adapter on the Vive so I didn't have to attach it back later. I also used the Nexus graphics mod for GTA 5 for better graphics. I will add links in the description to all the mods that I used in case you want to try any of these. I will now show a recap of all the hours and all the things I did during these 24 hours. I woke up very early, had a large breakfast, gave myself an hour to prepare and I eventually began my challenge at 9 am. I tried to memorize a list of activities which I should do to fill these 24 hours and I started by messing around in the middle of a meteor shower. I took a plane, I took off with the plane and I flew around the city for a while, enjoying the apocalyptic surroundings around and inside the city from the sky, but also from the ground in Trevor's car. I also wanted to take the subway, but the train eventually didn't show up. So I decided to be the train myself with the oppressor MK2 that I was using at the time. After that I just flew around with the oppressor until I was ready to do the next thing. Grand Theft Auto 5 is a great game and Rockstar worked on the game till the deepest details. Virtual reality makes it able to look at these details from a better perspective. So I took a moment to check out all the weapons in the game from virtual reality. When playing on a normal monitor, you don't really put a lot of attention to how everything looks completely. In VR, this is a lot more interesting to look at. So when I finished doing that, I went to the wildness up north on the map for some hunting on animals and to look around in the wonderful nature of Grand Theft Auto 5 through VR. In the next hour, I tried to do a few missions from the single player mode. Doing these missions in virtual reality is really awesome. It's not always so easy to keep a good eye on your minimap when you are playing the game in virtual reality. So, especially for missions, I had to open the map in the pause menu to see where to go to. 
But this doesn't take away any fun to do these missions in virtual reality. Matter of fact, being around the characters from the game, from first person, in VR perspective, is really funny. And it's also very cool to relive all these gunslinging moments from the game once more through VR experiences. Time flies fast when you are in virtual reality, that's for sure. And it was time to eat something. So I found a calm spot to eat at the cemetery in Los Santos. And I tried to be social with other visitors, which they didn't seem to appreciate that much. When I ate enough, it was time to move further and to do something else. I decided to go underwater with the submarine and to check out some underwater easter eggs. It's pretty fun to use every vehicle from this game in virtual reality, but for some reason this submarine is pretty cool. At this time I first took a 5 minute break to give my cat some food as well. And for the next hour I decided to be a tourist in VR and to do some sightseeing and walking around. I was playing with a game resolution of 3840 on 2160 and a graphics mod. So I had to do some sightseeing and give extra attention to the details around me. Until somebody tried to fight with me over some weird looking dude who then ran away from me. I ran after him for a very long time, so I could take a look at his weird face, but eventually he ended underneath my car. I try to fill the next hour by trying out different vehicles in virtual reality. Rockstar Games gave a lot of attention in making each vehicle different from each other and this is something amazing to see from virtual reality perspective. I'm using a lot of different vehicles as well later in the session when I was doing other things because trying and driving around in different vehicles in this game is honestly something that I could do for hours straight. By now it was 3 pm in the afternoon and since I didn't have enough yet of the vehicles in the game I then decided to do some racing. One of the biggest reasons why I miss VR in Grand Theft Auto 5 online is because of the races. Racing in VR is super awesome. It's in my top things that I like to do in virtual reality. It's really cool. In the single player of the game you have some races, not too many, but enough to keep me happy for another hour. Eventually, I ended up having 5 stars on my way to a race and I kinda start to raise the army who was chasing me. Once they destroyed my car, it was time to do something different. Since the game is very big, it also holds a lot of interesting locations which you can explore. 
And since I am forced to keep myself busy for a very long time, visiting these locations was also one of the things I wanted to do. When playing this game on a monitor, I barely played in first person. But this changes when you are looking from VR view. At some point, when I was walking out of the strip club, I suddenly saw Michael standing there. He invited me for a drink, but we ended up fighting the police together before we even got to a bar. The police shot Michael, so I had to take a moment to revenge his death. In the next hour, I have been doing some missions again. First one of the easy ones. But then things got real hard. If you think it was hard already to attach a vehicle on the cable from a cargo bob on a normal monitor, then don't try to do this in VR, because it took me around 30 minutes to finally attach that damn submarine on the cable so I could fly off with this cargo bob. By this time the hour was finished and I was already kinda bored out from trying to attach the submarine. So I started to do something else to have more action again. I first had to take another short break at this time because my cat was calling me for food. And I couldn't also hold it much longer myself, if you know what I mean. 10 minutes later, I took a visit at the weird cult camp village, but they didn't took my visitation so kindly. So I had to defend myself and accidentally wipe them out. After checking out the village from VR, I went back to Los Santos and started to try out some bullet cheats. Blowing up things in Grand Theft Auto is always a fun thing to do. But doing this in a virtual reality version of the game is really very immersive. It was time to do something different again, so I changed character to Franklin and picked up his dog Chop. Then I drove to the beach with him to play fetch the ball. Playing fetch with Chop in virtual reality is actually really fun. But not for a complete hour. So I ditched Chop and drove to the lake in the middle of the map. Trying not to drown my sand buggy. This didn't work out so well, so I decided to challenge the waterfalls with a boat while going upstream. By now I started to feel a little bored and lazy from playing VR so long. But I was halfway through the session, so I told myself that I had no choice but to finish what I started. Who is going to watch a 12 hours challenge anyway? I had to keep things interesting. So I decided to do one of my favorite things to do in VR in Grand Theft Auto 5, which is mountain biking. In real life, one of my other hobbies is also mountain biking. I've got two awesome high bikes and doing this from VR view in Grand Theft Auto 5 is really awesome to do for me. Thank you. 
I've been doing this for most of the hour, but I've also been challenging Mount Chiliad with a dirt bike. And then I catch the train to go back to the city. By the time I arrived in the city, I already entered the next hour. Since I was having wanted stars from having fun on the train, I didn't see a problem to finish the party with the police. Once they got me, it was time to think about my body. Not moving a lot for many hours makes you feel lazy and stiff. So I had to do something about it. I visited the beach of Los Santos to have a quick fitness session. And then I found some old friends who could accompany me while I was eating. But it seems that some of them didn't appreciate my company so much. I had some time left of the remaining hour, so I visited the maze northwest of Los Santos. And I got unexpected help from another visitor to find the exit. I also visited the movie studio, but ended up in another fight with security. For the next hour, I decided to play a little flight simulator with planes from the game. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to use many vehicles due to windows in the planes. I couldn't always see through them. So I had to pick other ones, which wasn't a big deal to me. So I was flying from airfield to airfield with different planes for quite some time. Which wasn't always so easy when you decide to try the biggest plane in the game. I had some time left, so I loaded a Formula 1 racing track and had some fun with the Progen PR4 and also the Ocelot R88. Until the map started to glitch and killed me. I wanted to start doing the Rampage mode which you can do in the game when you are playing as Trevor. But I noticed a huge police chase and I got curious to see what was going on. Turned out three thugs were stronger. No matter if you are in VR or on a monitor, to watch the AI in the game doing its thing stays a funny thing. Doing Trevor's Rampage mode in VR was pretty cool and very immersive. And again, explosions. After some rampages, I took Trevor to the beach to sniff some sea air. And to the golfing course so he could ride his favorite vehicle. I noticed Trevor's hunting mode which I totally forgot. So. I decided to do that as well until the hunter got hunted by a big kitty.
for this hour, I decided to play with the big ball for an hour long. First from an attack chopper, but that didn't turn down so well. I got the ball stuck around some trees and I tried to blow it out, but it was never powerful enough to get it out. So I went back up and tried to push the ball with an insurgent. It first worked out pretty good, but then I got stuck in a white hole in the ground and the insurgent wasn't strong enough to push it out. So I went back again and I tried with another powerful vehicle. And this time I managed to have more control of where the ball should roll to. I managed to get the ball all the way to the giant lake and pushed it in the water. This wasn't enough for me, so I took a submarine and tried to push it deeper and deeper. But eventually it seemed like throwing water into the ocean and the ball wasn't really moving much forward anymore. I tried for some time but it wasn't helping at all. I took a quick 10 minute break for my cat and you know the toilet. But once I returned I immediately started to do some triathlon races. Which was actually pretty cool to do in VR. A triathlon is a race which combines running, cycling and swimming. It's something not everybody can do. Especially not me, but now I was doing it in VR. Once I finished doing some triathlon races, I then visited a bar so I could sit somewhere comfy so I could have another moment to eat. I gave myself a moment to do nothing because after all, this time I was really starting to feel the effects. I started to feel sleepy and also a little demotivated because at this point I kinda forgot most of the rest of the activities that I listed to do within these 24 hours. So I had to improvise a little. When the next hour began, I visited some parachute jump locations to try out some parachuting from VR view. I also wanted to skydive above Mount Chiliad but surprisingly this wasn't so immersive to do in VR. I tried a couple times but every time it wasn't so nice. I had more fun with the super long parachute ride which I did around the side of the mountain. I then found a speed bike and decided to have some high speed action with that bike. Good motorbike simulations in VR are pretty rare to find but with a VR mod in Grand Theft Auto 5 it's really nice. I also drove through the subway construction which was really crazy from VR view. For the next hour I decided to do some more missions, because that's actually pretty interesting in VR. Every mission is a different story. Well, you cannot finish every mission in VR due to the fact that the VR mod is not an official VR release for the game. And that required controls to complete missions that are not compatible with this VR mod. As you can see, if I want to change character inside a mission, I had to interrupt the aiming with VR controllers to press the button on my keyboard. There are other missions that you can finish without issues or without swapping from VR controllers to keyboard. But again, this doesn't take away the wild fun you can experience when you play all this through VR. It was time to do something different again. So for this hour I was sitting as a passenger in vehicles with AI in them. Which wasn't all so bad. Until my first driver had to run from the police for some reason. After a couple few other rides I managed to get back to town and kept my role as a passenger. I then took a bus and turned on the meteor shower again to see what would happen. 
but at the end nothing much happened until a meteor hit the bus. I turned off the meteor shower chi and visited the beach to have some fun on a jet ski or to socialize with some other visitors at the beach. I started to feel that I had to take a moment to rest and the best location I could come up with to do this was on the big yacht. I took a chopper and flew to the yacht. I first took a moment to eat the rest of the food that I had prepared and enjoy the view. And once that was finished, I laid back and I had a rest for over 20 minutes. After I had my moment, I flew to a great yoga location on a mountain to do some morning yoga exercise. Realizing that I almost made it to 24 hours made me pretty excited, but I also started to have real issues to come up with different activities. So most of the time of this hour I just did some sightseeing and driving or flying around until I found the camper and just drove it to a farm. Still thinking about the next thing I should do, I decided to turn on the snow on the map and to fly around with an oppressor once more to enjoy the view. I tried to enter the prison and to see if I could have some action there, but each time I got inside of the prison, I suddenly died over and over. So I changed my plan and went to the army base where I can actually enter. I invaded the control tower, fought the army for a while and died trying to steal a jet on my way out. Finally it was time to count down the last 60 minutes of the challenge. I didn't really did much interesting from this point but using more vehicles and race around traffic or blowing up stuff with a tank until it was 9 a.m. in the morning again. So I finished the challenge after 24 hours. I was very tired to say the least. I shut down my computer and went to bed and woke up after 8 p.m. I was still very tired and feeling the effects of staying awake in VR for so long and waited another day before I started to review the footage to make this video. Was it fun to do this? Besides the fact that playing a game for 24 hours straight is ridiculously long? Yeah, it was fun. Besides the fact that one of my Vive's base stations isn't working so well anymore after using it for 24 hours straight? Yeah, it was fun. I'm not sure if I'll ever do a 24 hours challenge again someday, but be my guest to leave any suggestions in the comment of games where a 24 hours in VR challenge could be interesting to do. You never know, maybe I'll decide one day to try it out with one of these suggestions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, thanks a lot for checking it out, see you next time, salut!